Good morning. Welcome back to Morning Express. We're glad you're watching this morning. It's time for our lifestyle segment. So this morning we're focusing on uh, resolving conflicts and relationships. But before we get to that, we just want to update you on a developing story we're following for you this morning. You've been seeing that news alert on your screens uh, throughout the show. And we now have additional information where we understand that two children have been uh, confirmed dead after those two boats collided. Um, last night from Lake Victoria's Kiwa Island, that's in Suba sub county in Homer Bay. Um, so that happened last night, or rather Monday night, according to this report. The Homer Bay County Police Commandant, who's John Omusanga, confirmed the deaths, uh, and of course, it's still early on investigations, uh, casualties as well, those numbers not clear as yet. However, the total number of passengers in both boats are uh, currently being put at 200 people. Uh, so we'll continue to follow this story and bring you all the updates in terms of rescue effort or where that uh, stands right now. Remember, this is talking about Monday night and we're on Wednesday, uh, so that's already one day. Uh, plus a couple of hours passed, so we'll follow this and uh, keep you posted on the same. Uh, introducing my panel now for our lifestyle segment is Chris Hart, who's a relationships expert in my immediate left, and so next to him is Ken Oko, who's a sociologist at the University of Nairobi as well. Mm -hmm. Thank you for joining us, gentlemen. Pleasure. Today you get me. You're stuck with me. <laughs> <laughs> no, Michael. Happy <laughs> uh, So <laughs> conflict resolution, and I guess the first thing is, you know, people hear conflict and it sounds so serious, so bad. Your breakdown of conflict in a relationship. Inevitable. Um, quite a good thing. Mm -hmm. it's I mean, two intelligent people are bound to have different views of things. It's inevitable. Um, it's not just inevitable, we're obviously programmed to get into that situation because people, there, there really is some truth in the idea about opposites attracting. We tend to select a partner who has a different personality type to ourselves, so they see the world in a different way, and because they see the world in a different way, they disagree. Yeah. So inevitably, we will have disputes. And in fact, the worst thing you can do in a relationship is not admit there's a dispute going on you know, just trying to sweep it onto the carpet or one person's giving up all the time mm -hmm. ends up with a lot of difficulties if you do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What has been, what you hear from most couples in as far as conflict is concerned, do people realize it's a good thing to have conflict or is it something they always imagine now oh, this is doomed? Mm -hmm. Well, from the beginning, you know, sociologists, we look at conflict as um, the pursuit of mutually exclusive goals and mm -hmm. when two or more of you are running after the same thing, but with totally different, you know, personalities and objectives, definitely you come to um, engage in conflict. And when you ask about good or bad, again, we only identify two types of conflict. There's the expressive one, which finishes off everybody. You, lead, you end up in divorce or murder, spousal, you know, violence. Then there's the instrumental type of conflict, which is actually a means to an end. Mm. It's good to fight so that you make that benchmark. <coughs> you go over that mistake once and then you don't go over it again. But yeah. if you keep fighting over the same thing, then as a couple you have a problem. But the, the good type of conflict would be the one where it teaches you something. So if, you, if your spouse or your partner raises it and you fight about it, you hope you don't have that fight again in a long time. Mm. But if you keep fighting about the same sufuria, then it's either the sufuria or you. you know, so yeah. <laughs> yeah. Most people don't look at conflict in that positive way, as, as I was saying there earlier. They look at it as this um, thing that is going to tear them apart and this sure. person is coming and attacking them and being against yeah. them. And I must say it's difficult to look at it as a good thing. So how do you work in your uh, head yeah. that, you know, yeah, we are having this issue right now, but yeah, yeah there's some good that can come of it. I think part of the problem is that we're all sort of conditioned to this idea that in a marriage you're supposed to be happy, therefore you shouldn't fight, therefore it should all be sweetness and light and lovey-dovey and all the rest of it. Mm -hmm. um, it's not like that. The real world, people fight all the time. Think about it. You know, in business, in, in the workplace, mm -hmm. people are constantly disputing things. It's inevitable. So I think people, first of all, need to know what marriage is all about. Marriage is not about being happy. Marriage is about being married. You know, it's, it's about <laughs> being a couple. What do you mean it's about being married? <laughs> being married is fighting? Be, being married just means you've moved into Living a different alive. part of a society where you're presumably going to bring up children mm -hmm. and you're going to live as a couple and it has a different set of rules to being single. It's just a status, if you like, in life that you go through. Yeah. And it doesn't have any automatic tags to it, like we're going to be happy. 
Mm -hmm. No, you're not mm -hmm. automatically going to be happy. Mm -hmm. You work on it. You have to work on it. Lots of people are happy, but that's because they've become skillful. They've become accepting of each other's personalities. They've understood one another. They're supportive of one another. They're not playing power games and all the other things. You know. Mm -hmm. yes. If mm -hmm. you do all that, of course it's going to be happy. Which is what, yeah, which is what yeah. I want to go to in terms of what fuels conflict. And you mentioned power games. Uh, how do you see uh, some of those factors that feed into a lot of perhaps unnecessary conflicts in some cases? You know, before you even go there, yeah. uh, Chris is absolutely right. When you think about conflict, it's, it's mostly inherent. You know, you first fight with yourself. A lot of people don't acknowledge it, but self-conflict is where the beginning of you is. Because mm -hmm. when you get married, of course you keep asking questions. It's like in religion. You, you, you're told, don't question God. But you keep asking questions about what God is doing to you. Yeah, so like when a person, sad things happen. And yeah, you're like, how? somebody dies and yeah, then you're like, you're like why do you do this, God? Yeah. And as a person, sometimes you get married and you can be sitting here looking at your spouse and thinking, did I do the right thing? <laughs> but <laughs> you don't dare ask her. <laughs> <laughs> Already you have self-conflict. You're thinking there could have been a better option, safari mm -hmm. or whatever. <laughs> yeah, but, but, but you don't ask those questions. So yeah. eventually when it boils over, you're actually now looking at the two of you, hopefully not as gladiators, but as people who are prancing to find a way out. The beauty with conflict, again, is that it strengthens the personality. Yeah? And, and you as a person, once you learn your mistake, if at all you're the kind who learns. Yeah, because like yeah, and that's the thing, you need to be yes. open to that. That's the mm. thing, yeah, you have to be able not, to acknowledge yeah. it. Yeah, if you don't, then you have a problem. But if, if you're the kind of person who will acknowledge and say, hey, I think I went wrong there. Mm. And sometimes you don't even need to you know, s shout about it. You can tell it to yourself, and then the person will see that you're now moving on. But, you know, when you think about the power game, th there's the usual traditional gender thing. You know, your father tells you, you know, you're the man, so therefore you have to show her that you're the man. But you're thinking, this is a modern world. How do I show her I'm the man? Yeah. <laughs> so then you start trying to look for fifth dobs within the house and creating your space, which might bring a problem in modern society. Mm. Yeah, because, you know, the, the women today are saying, quote-unquote, we are equal. But that equality should not be translated into a flatbed of marriage where if I'm in the kitchen today, you're there tomorrow. No. So that's an area of conflict. Right. What are other right. things that fuel <laughs> um, conflict? Oh, I mean, the, the list is endless. Yeah. I mean, people dispute money. Uh, it's a power mm -hmm. issue. Um, they dispute how to bring up the children. They worry about other members of the family. How do you interact with mothers, mother-in-law? Mm -hmm. The list is just completely endless. Are they the most common or is oh, it yes. depends? The, the far and away the most common are the big three, you know, uh, sex, the, the um, power, in other words, money, the money yeah. and children, and a close fourth is the rest of the family. Mm. So let's begin with the first big one. Yeah, but you see, if you, if you, look, at, if you look at conflict in, in a compound manner, yeah. you're actually thinking of character and behavior. So all these things you're saying have to come from you as a person. Who are you? Mm. Because if, if you're the kind of person who, the minute she says, uh, I don't like this, and you're like, yes, mom, yeah, then she might even think you're lying <laughs> to her. You know, you're really trying to be nice. You know, but it has, to be some, it has to do with your character and personality as, as, as an individual. Mm. And any time you fight, how you get out of that fight is who you are. Okay. Of course, you'll know. In fact, women are very good at testing the limits. We've said that here before. Yeah, men too, actually. Yeah, men yeah, too. yeah. You can push up to a certain extent. Yeah. Yeah. Then when you realize she explodes at that point, you, you know next time I'm not going to go there. I mean, what, what yeah. he's saying is right. I mean, take money. I mean, if you've got one sort of personality, you think of money as something that you deal with as a team. Mm -hmm. We have a certain income, we have certain expenses, we're going to allocate a certain amount of money for saving and so on and so on. And you just discuss it and it's not a power issue, it's a team mm -hmm. issue. Mm -hmm. But now imagine you're the sort of person who wants to have the maximum control in the relationship. So now you keep your income s secret and you insist on the other person spending in certain ways and they don't like mm -hmm. being restricted like that, mm -hmm. endless fights. But what's really going on? One person is trying to be more controlling of the relationship than the other. Mm. Very tricky if you've oh. got those sorts of personalities. All right, and we want to just invite you to be part of this conversation. We'll have our phone numbers uh, scrolling on the bottom end of your screen. Call in, share with us a conflict you've had, how you resolved it, or if you haven't, perhaps our guests this morning could help out. Um, let me ask about discontent before we go to how conflict in itself uh, presents itself and how you know you know this person, we are now in the thick of mm. conflict. Mm. But in terms of discontent, so when I'm unhappy with a certain element, there are those who 
you know, retreat to their cocoons, not yeah. talk about it, mm. and go into this quiet, you're given sure. the silent treatment. They're those who will just, you come home and you just see that look and they explode. They're explode. <laughs> so uh, th at the moment where there is discontent by one party, how do you start handling well, it? Well, it, it's there? a skills issue. Yeah. I mean, the, the problem is that people are not taught as part of their schooling, if you like, how to resolve conflict. You're supposed somehow to just automatically know it. Mm -hmm. People don't in practice. So people acquire a conflict style through their childhood, through their teens and so on, but without testing it in a relationship. How can they? They've not been in one. Right. Now they get into a relationship and suddenly they're having to use their conflict skills mm -hmm. and they've got to be changed because it's quite a different thing to have a row with another boy in the school playground. Mm. You know, that's one type of conflict style. Right. So another style is required when it's your spouse and you've got to go to bed with them tonight. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, it's a very difficult thing for people to pick up those skills. They yeah. should be taught in schools, but we don't. Yeah. No. Mm. And right. that's the problem. Yeah, but when, problem. when you think of discontent also, you, you're, you're probably you know, hinting at a, a, a situation where you're at work and then you generate a problem or you encounter a problem at work and then you go home and you realize you're also not very happy uh, either that particular day or generally with your life then when you get home uh, the other person will walk into your situation yeah so you're already unhappy and if anything they do like even drop their jackets on the on the chair you pick it up and say how can you do that take it to wherever <laughs> yeah. even though he does that all the time but probably you never notice on this particular yeah. day and on this particular day how do you just drop your jacket there yeah. you know and so you you get it out there and, and it's a way of the, the other thing about conflict uh, I'm, I'm not saying it's a, an entirely good thing but it's, it's a way of ventilating mm. yeah sometimes when you have issues they can build up. There are a lot of things we overlook. Chris always says, you know, uh, when you're in a marriage, then yeah, you're living the real life. But then sometimes you're thinking about a situation where that real life is hurting you. But you don't want to just keep every week you're bringing something out. Right. Until one day you get an opportunity or mm. an excuse, so to speak. Mm. And then everything just boils over. And then you start reminding the other person. You remember even over Valentine's you did this. Christmas you were like this. A record of wrongs. And the guy's like, why didn't you ask me that time? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So the techniques, Chris, what we need yeah. to keep in mind in terms of, so when there's all of these issues going on, do we then sit down to talk? Well, it, each couple has got to develop techniques that are unique to them. But there are some good techniques that are well known in, in the trade, if you like. Mm -hmm. um, for example, good couples have a tendency when they first meet in the evening to spend just a little bit of time together making small talk. They make it a rule not to bring up any issues for the first five or ten minutes. Mm. Then of course they just equilibrate their moods a little bit and they reconnect. And now when you bring things up you're in a different sort of mood. Yeah. You've forgotten the traffic or the terrible row you had with your boss. Mm. And you've got back to being a couple again. Mm. Another very good technique a lot of couples have is they only raise issues by appointment. In other words, nobody ambushes. One of the worst things, of course, is the ambush. Mm. I walk into my house and my wife piles in on me. You know, yeah. inst <laughs> instantly we're in a real cat fight. Yeah. Now, a good couple learns that you don't do that. Instead, what does she do? She says, we need to talk about X, Y, and Z. Can we fix a time to do that? Mm. Now we both have a little bit of notice of the whole process. But mm. others who say we need to talk. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> but you see, it's, bad, it's a bad technique. Yeah. Yes, of course. There are lots of people who do that. Mm. And it is a terrible technique. Mm. And it doesn't take, for example, account of the different argument styles of males and females. Females have a tendency to ambush. It is a big thing for a woman. If there's something on her mind, she wants to talk about it. Now, then, now, now, now. 3 a.m., yes. it doesn't matter. Wake up. <laughs> Wake up. <laughs> but men don't like to do that. Men prefer a little bit of time to think about an issue and have some potential solutions before they start talking. Mm. So if you ambush a man, his natural reaction is to clam up. My man won't talk about things. Right, well, you ambushed him. So don't ambush him. Say instead, let's talk about it tomorrow. But Chris, for some women it's difficult to, you know, know gloss over and pretend mm. because in pretending then some will become very quiet or they'll just be like, mm -hmm. It's not a question of pretending. <laughs> it's a question of getting your diary out and agreeing that tomorrow we are going to talk about the issue of your mother-in-law, the teenager, whatever it is. Mm. Schedule it. Mm. You schedule it. And not only do you schedule it, you keep the appointment and you know it's going to happen. And now you both come to the meeting 
in a different frame of mind. Okay. It's a hugely powerful mm. technique. I once talked to a couple who mm. said that they usually have meetings, so to speak, like on Sunday evening when everybody's been home and then at the end of the day, and it's not just them, they start with themselves and they invite their two children. Wow. And you come and tell us what was happening in your life this week, is there anything you have an issue with? And that's the time the children will say, ah, daddy, you're late, you've been dressing very badly. You know, that kind of thing. <laughs> and you have, you have a general family outlet where you can do that. Yeah. The, there's the danger with, in fact, when people ask me about co resolving conflict, I tell them the what not to do's. Not, not what to do. Mm. Because what not to do is, is, like you said earlier, call someone uh, while they're at work and tell them, we have to talk. We need to talk. And then, of course, the guy's antenna is already up there Ooh, and he's coming home prepared. What did I you know, do? Like, <laughs> what's all this? But if, if you agree on it and you say, especially when you give the topic, yeah. the thing with, especially women, they'll tell you, we need to talk and not tell you what about. So you're sitting there in like a time bomb ticking, you know, <laughs> waiting. And then, but if, if someone says, like, like he says, um, let's talk about your mother-in-law uh, maybe on Saturday, yeah, and then of course, each one of you in your mind, it's very fertile at that time, you're thinking, yeah. my mother-in-law, my mother-in-law, yeah, so you play around with it. And, and the other thing not to do is to scream. To scream. Yeah, yeah. you know, when you both get there, especially when the man also starts screaming, then now there's a problem, because if, if you start talking about something and the only thing you can do is shout and, and you know, like, point out daggers at each other. Because then, then you're shouting you're because each of point you point is feeling yeah. unheard, so yeah, they feel like yeah. they need to... Mm -hmm. You know, Buddha has this famous quote that I like talking about all the time. Getting angry at someone is like knifing yourself and expecting them to bleed for you, to bleed on your behalf. Wow. Yeah, so it's like harakiri, you know, the Japanese thing. Yeah. And when you do it, it's you who feels the pain. Mm. So the guy is probably not even understanding what you're screaming about because of the way you're doing it. But if you were to sit them down and just tell them, you know what, you behaved very badly yesterday then you have their attention. Yeah. They'll probably ask you, what did I do? But if you say, how can you do that? You know, the, the guy will probably just like, he says, close up. Close and, up. Yeah. You know, you said that uh, example about that fra fra family and mm. what they do Sunday afternoons. Michael, uh, co-host, earlier on when we were teasing the interview, gave us an example of what he does. And mm. we talked about friendly fire. So that when they're in this good, happy times mm -hmm. with uh, his wife, then they will sit down together and say, okay, let's have friendly Come fire. Come up with issues, yeah. So, darling, you <laughs> know. <laughs> but when everybody is, you know, I good know, mood, happy, that yes. is that something that, well, a technique that could be... It's very point? good to raise issues mm -hmm. and not to dispute them at the time. You know, it, it's a very good idea to sit down, you're having a cup of tea, and you say, I'm worried about so-and-so, and you just flag it up, you put it on the table, now we know it's an issue and it needs to be discussed. And sooner or later it will be discussed. Yeah. But it's very bad to ambush. And it's also very bad to create an environment where disputes come out of the blue at any time of the day or night and you don't feel safe. So I come home and I don't know what's going to happen. So mm. I start walking on eggshells. I start avoiding certain topics because mm. I know if I mention trigger. the mother-in-law, there's, there's going to be a row. <laughs> and so I don't, ra I don't raise the extended family, I don't raise the children, I don't raise the... M Suddenly there's nothing to talk about. Yeah. Mm. So you need to make the home safe. safe. In other words, when I come home, if there's nothing in the diary, we're not going to have a dispute. Yeah. So I'm going to have a pleasant evening. Okay. So, mm. so that predictability in the sense of right. conflict resolution is important. Very so good. That I mean, another work. thing a lot of couples do yeah. is they always hold their rows in the same place, like the dining room table. Mm. That mm. means you... Mm. Not the bedroom. You, hope you, <laughs> you, you say you may not argue in the bedroom, in the kitchen, in the car, in your favorite restaurant, on the sofa. These are all no-go zones. So if I'm sitting on the sofa, you are not allowed to so row with I me. I feel like I'm going to win the bedroom like, babe, let's step up. Then you can bring up, <laughs> you can bring up your diary and a, say, a we need to talk about uh, something. Doesn't that sound a little bit too so mechanical, though, Chris? It Is that works. how normal life works? It I feel works. like you're it, it so... Hey, it's these not natural. I just need to be pissed. <laughs> Look, we all learn certain tricks in our lives. We yeah. all learn to write checks. We all learn to balance our books. We learn how to deal with policemen and all the rest of it. It's all terribly artificial, but we learn that these are the things you have to do in okay. order to be a good person. Right. And if you learn them, then all of a sudden your marriage goes a lot goes better. Well. Can I ask you this about, you know, you come and you want to sort out these issues, but mm. then there are people who are constantly defensive. The minute something is said that they've done or they're unhapp unhappy about, they always go to defending themselves more. Yeah. That, oh no, but even when really they were wrong, 
you know so you even feel like what's the point of talking to this person mm -hmm. so what is it that we need to be aware of as individuals constantly when we're in this you know you know the thing with with conflict is you you first need to be people who understand each other yeah. in fact the best part about marriage is, is the friendship thing where you can actually have you know banter with each other and just have a chat without really thinking uh oh uh, you made this mistake yesterday and you're going to make this one again tonight once you're friends believe you me you'll talk about these things in a manner that even you will be surprised about mm. because then it will come out and you probably if it's something not so serious you could even laugh about it yeah like if it's maybe about presentation the way he looks you can actually be putting your point across and you're very serious about it but it, it comes out funny mm. you know and you laugh about it and you tell the guy that <coughs> pair of trousers is just a no-go mm. and the <laughs> next day the pair of trousers will probably disappear and the guy will know why they disappeared but if, if you if you look at someone and then you start telling them particular issues that are probably very what's the word um very deep yeah and then you're, you're driving it in like yeah you need to do this you need to change this you're already creating an enemy out of a spouse or a, or a partner so the friendship part will solve a lot of your problems because you're able to then laugh about tv laugh about stuff that you see in the papers and once you're able to share like that when your own problems come up you're pretending it's the same thing in the news and you talk about so it so yeah. do not criticize don't attack because attack yeah. then gets defensive i mean there's 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 a well-known pathway by which relationships start to fall apart mm -hmm. starts with criticism if instead of raising an issue as a team, you know, we've got this problem, let's deal with it, I start the conversation with, you always do this. Mm -hmm. Straight away, we've moved into a different style of argument, mm -hmm. and we've started down that path. It, from criticism, we get contempt, we get all the rudeness. Pretty swiftly, we get into defensiveness. Mm -hmm. So in other words, I raise an issue, and all you can do is defend it, defend mm -hmm. what you did. Not, there's no problem solving going on. Mm -hmm. There's just an attempt to say, it's not me, it's somebody else. So those are well-known issues yeah. with relationships. That if you start along this criticism and defensiveness route, you are going to get into a lot of trouble. Yeah. The, the, mo the most difficult part is, the, in fact, the most difficult partner, so to speak, is, is the one who suffers from what I call the victim syndrome. You know, anything you raise, they make it look like, but you're the one who yeah. made me like this. You know, and so they become your victim. So that when you tell them, uh, why is it that you can't even tell me you love me? They say, but you, you drove that out of me a long time ago. Yeah. You know? And if anything you ask, they are the victim. So then you start feeling like you're in the wrong place. Because if, if you tell someone, you're always late, then they say, but you didn't notify me early, or something like that. And yeah. yet they know about Nairobi traffic, they know about whatever. All of this so then, mm -hmm. then once somebody starts playing victim all the time, then you, you start feeling like they're making you look bad. And then you'll also go into that defense mode and say, no, but you're the one who's done this to me. And believe you me, once you walk that road, as a couple, you're going that way. Yeah. Yeah, because any time that somebody raises an issue, um, the defense thing is never really a good one. Because you're supposed to explain an issue, not defend it. Not defend it. Yeah. But you said something before we came on air about some women fighting for fighting's sake. Mm. Um, and there are many men who feel that way, that there are women, every time they bring an issue, they're like, yeah, there she goes again. But really, isn't that... A yeah, I, I tell my students in, in sociology of the family that, yeah. you know what, if, you're, if your marriage is quiet for six straight months, <laughs> something is wrong. Something is wrong. Yeah, something yes. is wrong. You know, there has to be an issue <laughs> at some point in time, the lady, most likely the lady, will come and tell you something like, you are seen. <laughs> and you know that's a very general statement, but stupid man, you start defending yourself. And say, oh, that was my cousin, that was my sister. But you don't even know who you were seen with. Mm. Yeah, so they do that just to test the waters. But there, there are guys who then will take that up and say, who, finally, I needed to talk to you about Ebes a day. Yeah, and, and the minute you raise that issue, his response will be what you've been bottling up, but in a nice way. Mm. The worst thing is when you become accusatory. Like, like Chris says, the minute you tell someone you are like this, then you're not even defining the problem, you're defining the person. Yeah. And so they'll defend themselves and say, hey, my mother brought me up like this, what do you want? Mm. Yeah. Do women, uh, they fight more, even for no reason? Um, no, I don't think so. I think their style is different. It's more, it's more in your face because women bring up issues and they talk about them at an earlier stage. When men have an issue, whatever it is, they tend to think about it more. Mm. So you, you, you get people believing that women raise more issues. 
what they actually do is they open their mouths more often. They speak more. Mm. That's what they do. That's what they do. And by then they've already discussed it amongst themselves as well. That's the thing you guys do to us. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, you, you first you discuss it during the chama and all the those things. Yeah. And then, yeah. By the time you're coming home, other people have contributed to that problem. So that, and you're seeing it in very many oh, yes. aspects. Right. I, think, I think well, <laughs> a lot of husbands would say that their biggest enemy is actually their wife's friends. <laughs> Yeah, that they're the ones who feel yes, yes, they're yeah. all, especially if they're a little bit, you know, they're having difficulties in their own marriages, so oh, the yeah. advice they give is all very biased. Yeah. Okay. In terms of resolving it, those sessions are you sitting down and talking. They're those who do it in public, or it just explodes in the restaurant, or, you know, you skillful, place. Skillful couples know yeah. not to do that. Skillful couples know that, first of all, there are a lot of issues you shouldn't just raise at all. You know, is this mm. really worth having a dispute about? Is it just too small? They also know that they should give notice. They don't ambush. Mm -hmm. They also know that they should prepare their ground. They should actually have a clear, simple argument to give, not, not a row. This is the issue. This is how I see it. Now, how do you see it? Mm. If, the, if couples have those techniques, they get along very well. If they don't develop those mm. techniques, usually they... In terms of conflict resolution, mm. you, you, there's something you mentioned earlier about <coughs> right there in the moment and you were when he was talking about making an appointment. Yes. Yeah, but uh, I, know, I know it's very feminine to do that, like to get the claws out. <laughs> but the idea is, <laughs> the so rule is refreshing. never ruin the moment. Because you could be out to dinner, yeah. and then some old friend of his, or an ex, or whatever, just passes by, and the guy's oh. eyes gleam for a minute. And it's something that's gone. Actually, it's not even in his mind. So he wants that lady to just continue smiling like, mm. yeah. yeah. And then maybe, maybe when you get home, you tell him, "Hey, where, where? You know, how did you look at that woman like that?" Yeah. So don't ruin the moment because the minute you do that, but isn't that pretentious? So there's a requirement and a need to pretend to be happy. Yeah, but can you imagine if you go out for dinner and it's not just the routine family dinner? The guy probably said, "It's long since we went to Tamarind. Let's go tonight." Then at Tamarind, then you start ruining the moment, and that's one of those special dinners that didn't It's costing you a fortune, you know, and you'll so do it once in a year, <laughs> and you've just ruined it. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. Because you, you saw somebody pass, and he looked at her differently. You know, so you could, you could actually bottle it in and, and hold it for a while. But li like Chris says, that's a skill. It's a skill that we really have to acquire. Yeah. Because many people want to just, right there, right there, you know, get to do it. When you're driving, for example, again, you talk to a guy and somebody was telling me that his wife is always looking at beautiful cars. And, and then I told him, oh, maybe she's looking at the drivers, not the <laughs> car. <laughs> you know? Or and, maybe and she's saying, baby, you need to upgrade. A lot of times, <laughs> yes. Because then you check the car, then you check the <coughs> driver. Of course, it's natural. Who is it's driving not, yeah. that car? Yeah. Yeah. But, but sometimes when you think of that, unless you already have a lot of cobwebs in your mind about their behavior, You'll be okay with it because you'd, okay. you'd love somebody who admires cars or sportsmen or, or something. Sportsmen. Yeah. So, Chris, you say schedule these conflict resolution moments, and women perhaps will be more prone to bring up issues. But on the other hand, for men, many of them will want to steer clear. When they know there's something, even after scheduling, <laughs> they will want to stay away. And even in the moment, they'll just listen and be like, okay. You know, uh, they, they're, so, they're so detached because they don't want to get into it. Well, it, it depends what sort of relationship you've got. Okay. I mean, if you have a relationship which is heading for the rocks, then yes, maybe that will happen. Mm. And that's the moment when you start getting help. Mm. But in general, if a man has been given a little bit of time to think about something, he will take part in the discussion. Mm. What men particularly hate, they've been conditioned to do this all the way through their childhood, is they don't like being in a position of weakness. So if you ambush them, they're instantly feeling vulnerable, so they clam up, they want to get out, or they'll use anger, or they'll detach, or they'll leave, mm. or they'll do mm. anything to get yeah. out of the argument. Okay. But you give them notice, they will take part in they the will argument. Take part. And if they don't take part in the argument at that point, then you've got a much more serious issue. Right. Now you're, you're really up against somebody who's seriously got something to hide. Yeah. Mm. And you mentioned something important about help, because sometimes these <coughs> issues are beyond the two people, that they just cannot appear to agree True. at any point. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. at what point do you then decide we need help and what should help look like? Well, help should not really include friends and family. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's no doubt about it that if you go telling your mother or your parents that you're having a terrible time with your husband, they will never forget that conversation mm -hmm. and he, bad man. Yeah. he will never forgive you. So it should not include somebody like that. 
if you have a real bosom buddy that you've had all your life that you can totally trust and you really do know that they will never tell anyone else then by all means talk to them mm. but otherwise it needs to be somebody who's professional who will not mouth it around that's the mm. key they will okay. not tell anyone well, else. on the contrary a lot of a lot of people especially uh, let me say Kenyans don't like to seek professional help even yeah, though it's it, the it, best it's the yeah. best route yeah but they'll, they'll probably go um, next step the best friend and that person who you know your wife also trusts or your husband also talks to. Mm. Yeah, because sometimes, again, friends, like we said earlier, they're the ones who, their life is very miserable on their side. Then they realize, oh, misery loves company. You also have a problem. So mm. then you just fuel it and make it worse. Yeah. And, and, you know, sometimes at the very worst, then you, you go the spiritual route. Yeah, and, and you can start that at home and start reading your Bible and talking together about Christian marriages. But sometimes it's too ideal. Yeah, because your situation then requires what we call a love mechanic. Mm. You know, somebody who can then tell you this is the situation. You know, the reason, like we were saying earlier, the reason most men will lie, and I've talked to a lot of husbands, they tell you that if I come home at 3 in the morning, which is not a very good thing to do, but if you do, and your wife is standing there at 3 in the morning, mm. <laughs> asking you, where have you come from at this time? The first thing a man will tell you is a lie. Even though the truth would be so innocent, but he's like, hey, can't you, well, can we talk about this thing in the morning? Yeah. I'm so tired, I'm probably drunk. Yeah, but the, the minute you give a man a chance and you tell him, come to sleep, you're so late, or whatever it is, if he doesn't offer that explanation, he'll give it to you in the morning, yeah. if it's a good man. Okay. Yeah, so then, when you're resolving conflict, there are things, I think Chris mentioned earlier, there are things you don't need to fight about. They'll come out and they'll, they'll you know, air themselves out there. But when it comes to help, um, I think relatives and friends, no go. Yeah, because a lot of times they don't help you much. They have their own interests. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, and each one of them is just thinking, hmm, finally you're here with us because all of us are here. <laughs> are here. Yeah. And, and there are conflicts that are deal breakers. Isn't it? Oh, yes, yeah? yes. I mean, for example, if you really suspect that your spouse is cheating on you, you're going to have to have a serious row about it. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be tough. So you should not, that's a classic example of you should not launch into them with teeth and claws as they come through the door. You mm. want to prepare the ground for that because the one thing you don't want to do is invite a denial. Mm. Whether we're talking about a straying man or woman, the one thing you don't do is accuse without absolutely bomb-proof evidence. Because if I'm being accused, I need to see something in front of me which says, okay, I'm busted. So <laughs> collect evidence first. So you absolutely wait until you have something absolutely undeniable and then you plop that on the table and say we need to have a conversation now mm. we don't go through this horrendous denial loop mm. which can go on for years yeah. now we have to talk about the real issue and the other thing is of course that people need to know that most couples survive most of the big issues that go on in relationships they survive infidelity and all the rest of it mm. so if you start the argument with teeth and claws, chances are you're going to drive it over the edge. But if you say, come on, tell me what's going on, how are we going to solve this problem, chances are you're going to survive. Mm. So, uh, how you approach the argument is going to make a big difference. Can make a difference. I as we bring this to a close, what must we remember, everyone? Because I mean, even if it's not marriage, relationship mm. type of mm. uh, relationship, it's um, work or whatever else we are, there will be conflict as long as they're two human beings because we're sure. different. Uh, yeah, the, 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 the minute you're in a marriage especially, if, um, if it's not a relationship which you can transit from, the marriage is permanent, mm. you always need to take into account the other person's character and their space. Because most times when we fight, you forget that this is also a human being who you met 25 years into their life, they had been alive without you. you know, and then all of a sudden you're here thinking, I'm the one who brought you into this, I'm the one who brought you up. No. The, the, west, the best way to escape that scenario is to imagine that you're individuals mm. and that you met up 20 years into your life or 25 years and so therefore you work on it from there. Yeah, and, and usually when you're doing this you must always make cognizance of the fact that there, there's room for mistakes. Every human being is to err. You make a mistake yeah. and you have to live with it and just correct it and get better. All right, yeah. finally. Yeah, but the most important thing is to be a team. Mm. Stop thinking as an individual. Stop thinking as a single person always you know looking for the edge 
think as a team, if you do that, most conflicts will get resolved. Mm. Will get resolved. Thank you, Chris Hart, relationship expert, Ken Oko, who's a sociologist at the University of Nairobi, for talking to us about conflict resolution. Mm. And we hope we will get better in so doing. Thank you for watching the show as well. Always appreciated all of your feedback throughout. Uh, from Ali Ron and Leon, the newsroom, I saw quite a number of your. Um, tweets I'm still seeing quite a number of them now uh, but we just want to appreciate you for that but also uh, a breaking story or developing story now that we've been telling you about uh, two children that have been confirmed dead after of course those two boats collided and you want to stay with KTN News because in the next hour uh, from 9 which is about what five minutes away Michael will be giving you more details of that and of course some um, other stories that we are following for you today thank you very much uh, for joining us I understand Michael is on camera with me so Michael great show there yes absolutely fantastic and thank you for uh, that uh, insight on conflict resolution yeah uh, I give you an example as well yes, yes friendly yes. fire <laughs> <laughs> friendly fire that's what we call it yeah. and uh, thank you gentlemen uh, also for uh, sending us in on that and uh, yeah that's where we wind it up and we'll wish you all a fantastic and a wonderful day Indeed. Tomorrow you want to join us on so State of the Nation. We'll be focusing on all matters education. So we'll be looking at uh, some of that unrest we've been witnessing in various schools around, but also the issues with the teachers' unions, what they've been clamoring for in terms of their pay rise, and the government's argument on the other side. But also we've seen a lot of uh, issues around molestation. You're looking at that camera like it's going to run away. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, some of the I'm seeing I the know. view at home. Yeah, you're just and like I'm listening staring. To, I'm seeing you from the TV at home. No, yeah, I find it very awkward. <laughs> when you're talking and engaging oh, and somebody is so like away. not witcher. Okay. <laughs> Consider this conflict resolution. Yeah. Okay. I've end point noted. And yeah, I'm going, you <laughs> must do that. No, you don't always do that. So join us tomorrow. And uh, so Michael, yeah, you have a lot coming up on the Yes, uh, do stay with us. Uh, for those of us on KTN News, we've got uh, bulletin coming up at 9 o'clock on the news center. And for those of us on KTN Home, we wish you all a fantastic and a wonderful day. God bless. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.